Hello friends, welcome to Channel Razor Blade. I'm your friendly neighborhood Razor. I make nail art product review videos, technical tutorials, teach tips and tricks and more. And if you're beholding all of this before you and you say, Reza, what have you done? I don't have an answer. <laughs> I, I set out to make a color theory video and this is what happened along with six pages of notes and when I asked John to print out the pictures that I'm going to be using as illustrations as though this were not enough I don't even know why I made half of these anyway <laughs> he said you need professional help and that's true I do need professional help um but also I I I am suffering from scope creep again so let me let me try to keep this to a minimum it's going to be long but hopefully um, it's already been a minute and I haven't talked about any of these colors here. So let's get going. Today we're going to talk about color. Color theory is the structure and glue that makes our nail art into something whole. Whether you're guided by a natural intuition and facility with color, or whether you Google color palettes and painstakingly compare polish colors for your nail art, it's all valid. So um, color theory is going to help you understand uh, what you're doing and improve your process. So I've prepared a bit too much for you, as I often do. There won't be enough time to discuss everything. So I encourage you, um, ask your questions in the comments section. Make liberal use of the pause button. Um, what else did I have here? If you, I mean, if you'd like a closer look at anything I show you. So I hope the video will be worth it. I think of it maybe as a seminar in color, hopefully, if, if I... I'm doing this right. Um, so there will be still photos on my Instagram, my account info, and everything else is in the description field along with sources, any products that um, I specifically mention. Um, some of these colors are hand mixed. Some of them, a lot of them are discontinued colors. So I don't mention specific colors. It did take me forever to go through my collection of um, nail art, and, of nail polish and find exact matches for what I find on the color spectrum, color wheels that I printed out. Um, but uh, let's, let's get going. Um, I hope that if you enjoy the video, please leave a thumbs up. I did, um, as you requested, I did uh, delay enough to um, make a couple of manis using a couple of different color schemes that I'll tell you about later. Um, also, I got sick and I'm not getting tested because I'm not leaving the house and they're asking that, um, you know, people not clog up the uh, hospital, but I do think it might be um, the dreaded ick. So anyway, uh, but I am starting to feel a little bit better now. Um, so anyway, let's get going. So today we're gonna be talking about the traditional color wheel. So I'm not talking CMYK or RGB or any of that stuff. Um, we're talking about the one that was essentially developed by Isaac Newton, yes that Isaac Newton in the 17th century. Um, he took all the, he took the prism. Oh, I forgot to put on my little prism rings because I wanted to show you. So he took these little prisms and I don't, I can't make it happen. But anyway, the, the spectrum of visible light is, is reflected from these prisms. And what we get, gosh, <laughs> what I choose, what we get, is this so we've got red orange red well uh, let me talk about that in a second so um what he, what isaac newton kind of pioneered was he said okay look wait you take red you take yellow and you take blue which are what we call the primary colors and if you combine red and yellow we get orange if you combine blue and yellow we get green and if you combine blue and red, we get violet. So if, and then if you combine red and violet, you get red violet. Um, if you combine red and orange, you get red orange. S so on and so forth. So this is mango. Wait, no, no, I lied, I lied. No, I didn't lie, this is mango. That's like tangerine, uh, yellow, orange. And then here's yellow green, and then here's blue green and so on and so forth. So the color that we think of is purple a lot. Um, 
some would call that blue violet. And here's an actual violet, and then here's red violet. So anyway, I, I have all sorts of, I drew lines and stuck things to it. Sorry, I guess I didn't clean this as well as I thought. So that you can see how light moves through the spectrum, I made all these little gradient nails. It, I don't know that they really have a purpose <laughs> now that I've put them all on my little thing. So I'm gonna keep going. Anyway, so Isaac Newton arranged them into a circle and talked about re red, yellow, and blue. And so I'm gonna give you some vocabulary because to discuss color, you need to kind of build a foundation. There's lingo. So as you learn the lingo, you learn about combining a palette. So, um, and then there's one more thing I want to say. Uh, skill with colors like a muscle. The more you work with colors and combining them, the better you get at it. And the more likely that skill will become second nature. So don't be afraid to Google or copy colors from fabric or art you admire. And definitely look up color palettes on Pinterest. And I'm going to show you some of those a little bit later. I also have a Pinterest board that I um, collected palettes on for all my viewers and subscribers. That will be in the description box. Write down colors that appeal to you when you're browsing inspiration manis. Uh, I do want to say though, if your uh, finished art is going to be really similar to the inspiration ma mani, do, do credit the original creator. So let's talk about color terms and the options and combinations. These pure colors, red, yellow, all of these individual colors, we're going to call hues. So that's the actual color before it's altered in any way. We have primary colors and then the ones in between. So we're talking um, in between uh, red and yellow, we have orange um, and then we have green and then we have violet. Those are secondary colors. And I'm switching pages. Um, Tertiary colors are the are the colors where we have some fun names for them, um, like mango or tangerine or whatever. So right, but um, those are the ones in between the other colors. So in between blue and green, which is a secondary color, we have blue green, which is a tertiary color. In between green and yellow, we have yellow green, which is a tertiary color. So tertiary just means three. Um, what else am I talking about? So I told you about hues. We have three more terms to, to talk about now. And this is something that I created with a purpose. We're gonna talk shade, we're gonna talk tone, and we're gonna talk tint. These aren't just words for colors. So shade is the colors mixed with a little bit of black or any amount of black. So technically you're gonna have like a, it's a, it's a spectrum, right? So just like color is a spectrum, you can start with a little bit of black added to a lot of black added. So here's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet, all with black added. Now what is tint? Tint is essentially the opposite of a shade. So with tint, we've got red with white added, orange with white added, yellow, green, blue, violet, etc., etc. Now these are tones. So tones are if you take these colors and you add gray. So here are the original colors. Let me show you. I put these for comparison. And then here are the colors that I've added in these various things. So tones are gray added to these colors. So when you talk about toning down a color, your li it, the, the literal meaning of that is to add some gray. Now, uh, the metaphor of that, you'll hear color in a lot of times compared to sound. So colors can be loud or they can be muted. Um, that's a good metaphor um, because you're kind of hearing with your eyes when you look at color, okay? Um, let's talk neutrals. So we've got a lot of neutrals, at least as, de as defined in color theory when you're using color. So We've got white, black, and gray, and then we've got, um, here's grays or taupe, and then a dark, cool brown. We've got a warmer brown. We've got creams and beiges and khaki. We've got uh, different colors of metals. This is a cool metal, silver. 
and uh, here's a nice warm gold metal, okay? Uh, so that is, in, as far as when you're designing, those are kinds of things you can think of neutrals and accents. So um, let's talk gradient versus ombre, okay? So when we're talking about a gradient, that is any time where you get a gradual, um, you take a sequential monochromatic color palette. So we've got a gradual shift from one color to another. Um, this is a terrible gradient. I did these in a hurry. Um, let's think of a better one maybe. Here's a little bit better one. This is just a sample of complementary colors, which we'll get to in a minute. So anyway, you go from one color to other colors. If you're doing, if you're talking ombre, very strictly, that's within the same color family. So this dark blue to light blue is an ombre. Okay, so there's that. Monochromatic, what does monochromatic means? It's just, it's a Greek root. We've got chromos for color, mono for one. So it's a one color palette. Light and dark gives you variety. So here we've got a monochromatic blue. This is a, a smush marble. Um, here's another smush marble using a monochromatic chromatic blue palette with some uh, metallic blues added in there. Here we've got a, a specifically an ombre. So this is monochromatic blue ombre, which is really neat. And then here we've got a monochromatic teal palette with a smush marble. Very, very dark teal to lighter teal. And if you're, if what is teal, we can think of it as a greener leaning blue green on the color spectrum. This is mono, uh, this is grayscale. So not all grayscale, wait, no, no, I'm gonna say it wrong. So not all monochromatic obviously are grayscale, but all grayscales are monochromatic. So let me get to my note, next notes. Too many notes, too many things. So a another word for this is monotone achromatic, but I don't think you'll need to Google that. It's just uh, think about also, uh, maybe this is visually boring, add a bright color to a monochromatic um, black and white grayscale kind of scheme, boom. And that is a very exciting color. Like think about adding a bright pink or a bright like blue. Look how neat next to these the blue looks. It looks even prettier because it's next to a monochromatic grayscale. So temperature, what are we talking about with temperature? You'll hear that talked about sometimes. I don't even know what I'm doing with these. There's so many little color wheels. Okay, let's talk temperature, okay? This half of the color wheel, the red three yellows, um, are warm colors. And here, on this half, the green, the blue, the violet, etc., we've got cool colors. So if I'm talking about a warm brown, that might be a little bit of yellow added to a brown. It might be a little bit of pink added to a brown. But the undertones, which you'll be able to see, will tell you if that's a warm brown or like this guy, is it a cool brown? We don't see any pink or yellow undertones here. This is a cool brown. So um, where am I now? Oh, so if you're talking about combining, maybe you don't, maybe you want a cool palette. So you want like a violet and then you want a blue and you need an accent color, but you really want to stay with these cool tones. Maybe use a neutral maybe use white. White is super useful, so is black um, in these colors. In fact, in this color scheme, which is also called tetradic, just Google it, I don't have time to cover it. It's a really hard one. Um, I have used yellow green, yellow orange, and red violet, um, and then a purple. And these I've used together with white, and then some black for the stamping to make what I hope is a lovely Manny. I really like it, tell me what you think. Um, so let's talk different color combinations. Analogous, what does analogous mean? Analogous means next to each other 
on the color palette. Maybe I didn't need all these things I printed out. Here's one of them though. So if I'm talking analogous colors, maybe I'm going to combine red, red, orange, and orange. Those are next to each other. Uh, they make great gradients, by the way. Um, maybe for analogous, I'm gonna use red, purple, purple, and blue, purple, or blurple, some people will say. That's an analogous color scheme. And I've made a bunch of examples um, here. So just take a look. I'm not really gonna go over them but these are good examples of analogous colors. And specifically over here, what I did was I took out like in my mental color wheel, I took out like the in-betweens. Um, so like, I don't really think about blue, uh, green, or I, I thought about analogous just in, here's green and blue next to each other on the color wheel. Those are dry brushed onto a white background. I really like that. Here's blue and purple. Those are next to each other on the color wheel. If you don't think about the tertiary colors, those are on a white background. And here I've got all three. I've got blue, green, and purple all on a dry, br all dry brushed on a white background. I really like that. Another example of analogous, um, if you're trying to vary things, here is um, yellow, orange, yellow, and green, okay? So these are the purer forms and these are the muted forms. So think of these as like fall colors, okay? We've got mustard, we've got, um, wait, I lie. We've got squash or pumpkin, we've got mustard, and then we've got olive green. And that's a different look. Um, but think about all these variations of the colors. Don't just think of them in colors of their pure form. Here's another one where I did, here's, a uh, blue, violet, oh wait, I like, okay, so <laughs> sorry, so here's, uh, I didn't label these, so here's um, red, violet, violet, and blue, violet, I think, and then here's lavender, which is a blue or violet, we've got pure violet, so like a, a pink or purple, and then here's a truer pink, uh, which is red, violet, with a bunch of white added, a bunch of white added. Um, so there's that. I really like analogous colors. Now we're going to talk about another thing called triad. If we look at the color wheel, I'm, I'm actually going to grab a demonstration. These are triads. So red, yellow, and blue, well, you know what I meant, <laughs> pointing, is, is a triad. And so is orange, green, and purple. Um, here are the analogous that I mentioned before. I'll talk about these two in a minute. Anyway, so triads are an even triangle on the color palette. So I did some, um, I did some examples of these on white, but I'm not always a real fan of triads um, together. So here's a folded French, um, with the full triad. So we've got red, violet, we've got blue, green, and we've got yellow, orange. Okay, here's uh, orange, red, uh, yellow, green, and violet. But here what I've done is I've replaced one of the triad colors with a neutral, a taupe. So here is a yellow, green, there is a purple, and I really like those together very much. So here's a, um, a red, red violet and then here's a mango color and then I substituted the other color and I got a taupe in there instead. So that's another option, okay? Uh, so finally we're gonna do complementary colors and split complementary colors. So as far as complementary goes, I think a lot of you might already know these. These are opposites on the color wheel. So let me bring up my big demo again. So we're talking purple and yellow, or sometimes as far as a color, this is called gold, um, although gold also means the metallic, right? So, or we've got blue and orange or red versus green. Everybody knows red and green, that's Christmas, but um, you can also do cranberry and pine, which is what I've done here. I've, you know, varied the amount of the color 
So here is a dark forest green or pine green, and then here's cranberry, and I did a, an ombre here. Here's a couple of examples of complementary colors as polka dots. So we've got blue green, and we've got red orange. We've got purple and gold. We've got um, green and red. And then I have to admit, I don't know what I did here. It says complementary. Oh, okay, so this is to show you the different, so these are both complementary color schemes. So here is a, a red violet, and then here's a lighter red violet, which could be referred to as a pink. So, and the, they both are complementary to that yellow green. Here is um, turquoise and orange, and then uh, light yellow and light purple, and then pink and green. Um, it's just a, an incarnation of red and green. Here we've got very light pink, very light green. So maybe think spring pastels when you think about those. Now you ask, what is a split complementary? And that is one that I really like because it gives you a little bit more variety. So split complementary is when you take a color, let's say red, you go to the opposite, but instead of taking the green, instead of taking the opposite color, we're gonna talk, we're gonna take the blue green and the yellow green. So if we talk about purple, instead of yellow, we're gonna take yellow orange and yellow green. And those can be really fun. So did I, oh, I did, I did, I did, I did. Here we go. All right, so here's some split complementaries. Am I right? What did I do with these? What are these? Oh, of course I didn't write them down. These are split complementaries. Okay. So we've got, I'm just going to, I'm running out of time. So I'm just going to show you these. And then here's some more split complementaries. Oh my goodness. Why didn't I label these? I'm very sure that that's what these are. And then here, what I did here is I did split complementary minus one. So I really like red and teal together, right? Um, that is a split complementary minus one. So it's almost a split complementary, but I left out one of the colors. And then here's a muted version, or actually here's the tone. I lie, tint, here's the tint version of that. And then I put down a bunch of colors that might go with those. And then as, as for a split complementary, yellow and pink, and then here's the tonal version. And then I put down the base colors. Here is um, dark blue and tangerine or yellow orange. And then here is the tint version of that. And I put down the root colors all in here. And you might recognize the format of these little root colors because that's how you'll see a lot of palettes that you search out online. Um, so in my Pinterest board, you're gonna see these two. I'm searching, sorry. Um, so like for example this, you've got a picture and then maybe in Canva, maybe in another program, they grab the colors and now you can see the palette as you can use it. Same thing with here, here's an example here. Here's a Halloween palette. Um, that, this is also in my Pinterest board. Um, this is by Hobby Lobby. So here are the various colors grabbed out of this Halloween palette. So that is a really great way to get inspiration. Very valid, very fun. So um, when you're selecting colors for an actual Manny, um, you choose a main color then you choose a co-star, and then maybe you stop there. Or maybe you choose accent colors. So what did I do here? I did, I used my complementary colors. We've got red, we've got green. And then for these, I went ahead and used a, um, a tan. It's got some gold flecks in it. So a, a, a neutral and a metal. And then I did uh, dry brush stroking for in a couple of alternate versions of these colors. And then I called it a day. And that, I think, is a good way to do a Manny. So 
Um, sometimes you can do a really loud mini like this, but you really want to center it with white or um, calm it down some other way. Another way to do brighter colors is to use polka dots or another visual element to use the color sparingly, like a little, um, like blush, like, a, you know, just a little accent that you use. So um, what do you, what do you do? Um, how do you physically pick out colors? So one thing that some people do is they make swashes of all their polishes and that way they can kind of play with colors without taking out their polishes. I like to physically touch my polishes, plus I keep them by color instead of by brand. So if I have some colors in my brain, I can go right to the color and, um, and that helps me out. So then, then I'll kind of play with those. What do you feel like? Um, what brings you joy? Do you prefer brights? pastels, jewel tones, neutrals. Is there a holiday or a special occasion? Um, not only is Google your friend, but you know, memory. Do you get cards in the mail? Do you have some fabrics that you like? So um, resources. Um, so I do have a Pinterest board and then there's a color lovers website, um, color spelled with a U like the um, British English or Canadian English way, C-O-L-O-U-R, Lovers website. What else do I have to say to you? I'm getting there. I promise I'm getting there. Here's another um, example of split complementary if you couldn't visualize it before. And this is what I was talking about when I was talking about tetradic. That's two pairs of complementary colors used in the same, um, used in the same palette. All right, I really need to find page, last page, so I can tell you any other things. Um, so Swatchmatic for Android, that identifies any color you point your camera at. Um, if you've got an iPhone, Color Snap works well. That's made by Sherwin-Williams, the pink company. Um, so don't be afraid of using your tools. Use your tools. Some people have a natural knack, but you know what? Humans were evolved to be tool users, so use those tools. Um, maybe you want me to do another video on color. I don't know whether you do. I can talk about actually physically mixing the colors and how to do that. Um, uh, next video that I'm going to do is a uh, Manny by Me review for the month of January. We've got the Art Nouveau box that I've been waiting literally since I started stamping four or five years ago for. Art Nouveau is my favorite. So um, please tell me what you thought of this video. I know it was long. I hope it taught you a bunch of things. Please ask questions. Um, for this particular um, color wheel, I did all the colors and then I did some of the neutrals and a bunch of neutrals in the middle. Uh, what else am I missing? Um, do subscribe, please join us. I make a lot of videos and hopefully they're helpful. Um, I, I love to hear your feedback. I need to know um, what you thought. So subscribe, click the notification bell so you get my next video, which is coming as soon as I can. And have fun above all. Be kind to yourselves and be creative. I love you so much. Bye-bye.